Module 10, Performance Outcome Area 8. Hello everybody and welcome to Module 10. My name is Frode Linset and I am from the Norwegian Tax Administration. This module relates to POA 8, which is about efficient revenue management. Keeping proper accounting of tax revenues and reconciliation with the government accounting system is critical for budget management. Because the tax administration plays such an important role in that uh, accounting, it needs to achieve a high level of efficiency in keeping track of tax re receipts and analyzing results. Hence, the importance of efficient revenue management. At the end of, the, of module 10, you will have learned the following about this performance outcome area. You will be able to objectively evaluate the level of efficiency achieved in revenue management by a country's tax administration. This evaluation will help you professionally perform your task as a TADET assessor for POA 8. You will be aware of the international good practices in this area and you will also know what indicators and dimensions are used to measure the performance of tax administrations with respect to efficient revenue management. You will learn about the scoring criteria that will help you score the indicators and dimensions for this POA. And finally, you will know what evidence and what questions you should ask for to be able to conduct an objective assessment of this performance area. Let's first look at the desired outcome shown in the following slide. We will also examine the basis on which POA 8 is founded. The desired outcome for POA 8 is that the tax revenue uh, collections are fully accounted for and monitored against expectations and analyzed to inform governmental revenue forecasting. Another aspect would be that legitimate refunds are paid promptly. Let me give you some background information. Although the primary responsibility of revenue forecasting and tax revenue estimation rests within the government finance agency, the, the tax administrations are normally expected to provide data and uh, analytical input to this governmental budgeting process. The tax administration should maintain a system of revenue accounts and it should also ensure that tax refunds are paid out promptly. So what are the good international practices that contribute to greater efficiency in revenue management? Let's discuss them in the following slide. The elements of international good practice in efficient revenue management are the following. A revenue uh, analysis capability within a, sp a specialist unit that can provide an uh, analysis of revenue trends, tax expenditures, payment behaviors, and yield from audits. Regular monitoring and reporting to government of core tax uh, collections. Methods to detect early de deviation from forecast and to identify causes an automated revenue accounting system to minimize errors and fraud and to ensure timely posting. Also, routine reconciling of the tax administration ledger to the government's revenue accounts and routine conducting of regular internal audit of the revenue accounting system to ensure that controls are followed. And le legitimate tax refunds that are paid out promptly. Now that we know uh, the good practices, let's look at the indicators that we use to measure the performance of a tax administration in this outcome area. There are three indicators and four dimensions for this POA8. We will discuss these items in the following slide. P826 is the indicator for contribution to the process of government tax revenue forecasting. And P827 is the indicator for the adequacy of the tax administration revenue accounting system. 
and P828 is the indicator for the adequacy of processing text refunds. Now we come to the dimensions. The dimension for P826 would be the extent of tax administration input to government revenue forecasting and estimation. The dimension for P827 would be the adequacy of tax administration's revenue accounting system. P828 has two dimensions. A, the adequacy of the VAT refund system, and B, time taken to process or offset VAT refund claims. Now that we know uh, the indicators and dimensions for POA8, let's learn how to score them. We will start with the first indicator of P826, which is contribution to the process of government tax revenue forecasting. Remember, indicator P826 has only one dimension, which is the extent of tax administration input to government tax revenue forecasting and estimating. And because there is only one dimension, the dimension score becomes the indicator score. Let's look at the criteria for this dimension in the following slides. For an A-level score, the following requirements need to be fulfilled. The tax administration gathers data about revenue collection and economic conditions as input to the government budgeting process. Next, it monitors tax revenue collections against budgeted revenue forecasts and reports findings to the government. Also, it forecasts VAT refund levels to ensure that sufficient funds are available to meet le legitimate refund claims. In addition, it monitors and reports cost to revenue of tax expenditures. And finally, it monitors and reports about the stock of tax losses carried forward by taxpayers that may be offset against future tax liabilities. For a tax administration to get a B-level score, the first three elements would need to be fulfilled, but not the last two. And to get a C-level score, the first two elements would need to be fulfilled, but not the last three. Now, let's look at the second indicator, P827, which is the adequacy of a tax administration revenue accounting system. Indicator P827 has only one dimension, hence the dimension score becomes the indicator score. Let's start with the scoring criteria for the single dimension of P827. Because a, a, a score of A represents international good practice, a country's tax administration can get an A-level score if all of the following are present. A tax administration has an automated accounting system that meets uh, government, IT and accounting standards. The tax administration accounting system interfaces with the Ministry of Finance's revenue accounting system. All payments received are posted to the tax administration's accounting system within one business day. And there are regular external and internal audits to ensure that the accounting system aligns with tax laws and government accounting standards. For a B-level score, the first two elements must be fulfilled as, as well, as you can see here. The third element has a little modification. All tax payments received are posted to the tax administration accounting system within two business days. And the fourth element is a bit modified and requires regular internal audits that will ensure the accounting system aligns with the tax laws and government accounting standards. For a C-level score, once 
Again, the first two elements need to be fulfilled. The third element must be fulfilled, but it allows all tax payments received to be posted to the tax administration's accounting system within three business days. The fourth element does not need to be ful fulfilled. Now, let's look at the last indicator, which is P828, and is about the adequacy of the tax refund processing. Remember, this indicator has two dimensions. One about the adequacy of the VAT refund system and one about the time taken to pay or offset VAT refund claims. For this indicator, the M2 method is used, which means that the average of the scores for the two dimensions become the score for the in indicator. Let's see how the dimension P828-1 about the adequacy of the VAT refund system is scored. Here are the slides. For an A-level score, the following requirements need to be fulfilled. A risk-based verification would be A, the screening of refund claims using risk assessment software, B, a pre-refund audit of high-risk cases, and C, a post-refund audit of low-risk cases. The second element would be that the budget will be allocated to meet the legitimate refund claims when they occur. The third element would be an offsetting of excess VAT credits against tax uh, arrears, except in cases of genuine disputes. The fourth element would be a fast-track refund to risk screen taxpayers, including exporters with, with good compliance history. And the fifth element would be the payment of interest on delayed refunds. For a B-level score, the first three elements just mentioned would need to be met, but not the last two. And you can see them here. For a C-level score, only the first element would need to be fulfilled, because that's the most important one. The other one don't need to be fulfilled for a C-level score. Finally, we come to the second dimension, P828-2, which is about time taken to process VAT refund claims. Let's see how this dimension is scored. To get an A-level score, at least 90% uh, of VAT refund claims by number of cases and value must be processed, meaning paid, offset or declined within 30 calendar days. For a B-level score, at least 80% of the VAT refund claims must be processed within 30 calendar days. And for a C-level score, the requirement is at least 70% uh, and, again, within 30 calendar days. And for D-level score, the requirements for a C rating are not met or the information available to the TADET assessors is insufficient. I encourage you to look at table 26 of the field guide for a detailed checklist of questions to ask the tax uh, authorities as well as examples of documents and other evidence to guide you in the information gathering process and field interviews related to POA 8. The information can either be requested from the tax authority in advance through the questionnaires in the pre-assessment phase or can be obtained from a web search. Some pieces of evidence will need to be observed during the in-country uh, assessment and discussed with the tax officials during the assessment. Now that you have learned about the detailed methodology for POA8, you should be able to conduct an assessment for this outcome area. You have learned about the good practices in efficient revenue management. You have learned what the indicators and dimensions are for assessing the level of efficient revenue management and how they are scored. 
And finally, you have learned what to look for when gathering evidence for scoring, whom to ask, and where to find useful information. Now you are all set to move on to the final POA, which is about transparency and accountability. Good luck.